Welcome to, to today's fireside chat session two. So I'll be uh, taking uh, another ten more minutes uh, for a cogging talk meshing and solving in Alteraflux 3D. So, so first of all, this is the agenda. So what we're coming in the next ten minutes. So what is cogging talk and how we'll do so how it needs to be simulated in Flux 3D and Flux 3D how we can import a geometry and mesh for the cogging talk analysis. So finally, we'll take the Q&A in the last uh, 10 minutes. So first of all, what is Cogging Talk? So we all know uh, what is Cogging Talk, but just to refresh some things here. So generally, Cogging Talk is a one, uh, the electromagnetic interaction between the permanent magnets of the rotor and the status slots of the permanent magnet machine. And this is really important to consider, to compute the Cogging Talk. And it is a, a position dependent and it, it will be depending on the number of rotor poles and the stator teeth. So for sure, this is an unwanted phenomena. So we need to simplify this talk and so further we can uh, also, uh, this, will, this will also be helpful for to take addition on the NVH analysis as well. So how to simulate? So I do have a workflow over here. So first of all, we start with the, the geometry and then we'll eventually we'll mesh it. And we can use either the magnetostatic application or the transient application, uh, then we can, create the materials and we can create the motion which is rotating and fixed and we can create the regions and assign it to the respective uh, type of the region and we can define the scenario. So if you're trying to use a magnetostatic simulation, so you can also use the distributed computation. So which be because in the magnetostatic computation, the, the solving steps will be independent of each other. So then we can plot the curve and we can do the FFT to know the, the harmonics of it. So next coming to the scenario part. So the scenario part is very important for the cocking talk. So in most of the cases, it will be the periodic. So we can solve for the one slot pitch, but sometimes in some cases, you may require to solve for the much longer scenario. For example, if we have a housings, which is not a circular one or a periodic, and if we have a holes and the sits near the tooth and the square laminations and the eccentricity, for all these uh, cases, we may require uh, to have for the longer scenario, which may one be one full mechanical turn uh, to simulate it. So further, I, without delay, I would like to go to the tool. And uh, this is what the steps we are trying to consider today. So we'll import the CAD and uh, we'll try to apply the extrusion mesh as much as possible. And here we'll try to go with the three layer mesh and we'll see how we can consider the three layer mesh now in the air gap. So let me go to the tool. So I'm opening a new project. So let me import a CAD. So here I do have a step format of CAD and I can import it here. Then once it is imported, we'll try to see how the geometry looks. And based on that, we can try to uh, assign so create the sliding cylinders over here. So if you can see here, this particular geometry is having only the rotor and stator parts with magnets, but we do see there is no volumes or the regions for the air gap region. So we'll try to create it now. So for that reason, we can create the cylinder over here. So we'll try to create a three cylinders. So each in the, in the air gap, uh, each of one third of the radius of the air gap. And the height will be the, the height of stack length of the motor. And I'll try to have another, furthermore, because to have uh, uh, the rotating air region and the in the upper region of the rotating part. So then I'll try to create another cylinder. So then the third one. So if you can see here, we have created a second cylinder with a two third of the, the air gap. And the third one will be So now we can see here. So now we'll try to see uh, the assembly operation and then we can cut the using, you can, we can use uh, cut objects. So, so, but we are considering only the periodic part. So we'll try to delete, which is unwanted geometry. So I'll try to cut over here the cylinder and possibly in exit plane. So 
this one is not needed so i'll try to delete it uh, similarly we need to cut again and we do not have any reference plane so we can create a new one now so we can try to create a new one with respect to this face okay and then we can have another cut section and i'll try to delete it because it is not needed anymore and now we can see the geometry is having some uh, superimpose of bodies so we need to have an assembly to avoid it So now after doing an assembly operation, you cannot see that superimposition of the bodies. Now you can see it is fine. So now come out of the modular context. So we have built the sliding cylinders and we do have three layer air gaps here. Okay. So the first one will be rotating and the third one will be the static and the, me the middle one which where we have, we can impose some mesh uh, elements over there to have a finer smoother torque. So now uh, we need to create in uh, the boundary conditions for that we need to create in we need to create the periodicity boundary condition so here we do have only the one eighth part of the motor so we need to consider the periodicity because of all here we have only one magnet pole so we need to consider the odd periodicity and then we need to have a symmetricity as well with respect to xy plane And then we need to create infinite box. So basically, I'll go with the Z cylinder. For rotating machines, you can go with the cylindrical uh, infinite box. So later, I'll click OK, and then you can complete the infinite box to make a connection between the boundary conditions and also the device. So now it is fine. Then we need to define the application. So you can go with magnetostatic application and then you can save the model yeah after assigning the uh, application now we need to import the materials or you can create the materials so i'm importing the materials from the database we do have a flux database material manager from there we can import the materials so here my lamination thickness of the material of the, of the stator and rotor will be too uh, 0.35 mm and it is having 2.7 watt loss per kg. So I'll try to select that particular material over here and drag and drop here. And then for the magnetic material, the magnets, so I'll be using uh, CY and N35. So just drag and drop over here. Okay, and now the materials has been imported. You can see over here and then we can create volume regions like stator part and you can assign the type of region as magnetic non-conducting with the necessary material so next the rotor part the same material and the next we can see the rotor air similarly we need to create another three regions and which is a type of region is air or vacuum region so i'll create it so one is for infinite region and next is for magnet. We do have magnets here, permanent magnets, and it is also magnetic non-conducting, and the material will be the magnet material. So then the magnet two. So we define the regions and now we need to define the motion. So to define the motion, we can create a mechanical sets here. So one is rotational. Okay, with respect to zero zero. And another is a fixed one. Okay. And now we have created the mechanical sets as well. So we'll try to assign the mechanical sets to the all the regions what we created. So infinite will be the fixed. It will be stationary. The magnet will be rotating along with the rotor. So let me see again. So this will be rotational and this will be fixed. And yeah. Next, we need to assign the regions. So we created the 
volume regions, but we ascend, did not send to the volumes. So let me take the command assign regions to volumes. So here we can assign it here. This is the infinite regions, and this is the air region, which is the fixed, and this will be the rotor air. And this will be the rotor. So magnets. So this will be again a rotor air. So next we need to consider assigning the stator regions. So you can hold control for multiple select volume selections. Okay. And this will be the rotating air and the remaining parts are you can select all of them and you can assign it to the stator air. Okay, by this we have defined the physics. Okay, now we need to go to the mesh part. So this is a critical one uh, for the cocking talk. So we'll try to create. Uh, we'll try to see now. So let me select the volumes. So as I told you, we are trying to assign the me extrusive mesh as much as possible. We do have so many volumes of the same height. So that is the reason I can go with extrusive mesh. So I'm just selecting the, those volumes with some filtering. So I'll just select the surface and union it so that I can select multiple volumes at same time so this all will have been the extrusive mesh so i'll need to assign it to the extrusive mesh generator so we can create a new one here extrusive mesh and here we do have the extrusion and we need to create we need to associate with the transformation with the z height and here we do have the height of 37.5 which is a half stack length so I'll just click OK and then click OK again. So and then we need to assign the regions over here, I mean the line lines. So let me take the elements. I do have imposed some five elements over here. And then I need to consider the air gap lines over here where I can impose some mesh, mesh elements. So I do select the two, two lines of the air gap line and then I can create a new mesh line for this and I can impose elements like 6 into 40, it is 240. So I'll tell you the reason for this when I go over the solving scenario. Okay, and then we can also impose the Map, mapped mesh. So we do have considered the extrusive mesh, but we can also have considered the mapped mesh to this particular region. So where I can have this particular mapped mesh, and then I can mesh the model. So it will be very fast due to the extrusive mesh. So it's fine. Now the meshing has happened. So we can check the mesh and you can check the quality, and then we can assign the orientation for the magnets so so now you can check the arrows okay for the full view you can see over here and then we can delete the arrows and we can go to the solving scenario you can create a new one and we are trying to uh, impose uh, solve it for the with respect to angular position and one this is with respect to one slot pitch we do have 48 slots in mission in this mission and one slot pitch will be 7.5 degrees and for one slot pitch i'll try to go with the 41 40 steps so that is the reason we do have six slots here six multiplied by 40 will have 240 elements so then i can click okay and i can solve the model Okay. okay, and I guess the most yeah, important we do. part was that you wanted to have the exciteron element within the air gap, right? So that you yes. would have a nice continuous mesh and everything. Okay, 
Um, I think it's time to go. Uh, we saw the result uh, of the solving uh, in the pictures you sent before. Yes. Uh, thank you uh, very much, uh, Carwin.